Well, family, I pray that you are indeed having a very joyful, joyful new year. And we are grateful to Almighty God for allowing us to transition from 2022 and into 2023. All the honor and glory belongs to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I continue to always pray that all is well with you guys. It's good to be back with you. And we thank God for this opportunity as we just go forward in his word. So I do always continue to pray for you and your family and pray that all is well. And we know that uh, God will just continue to watch over us and take care of us and bless us as we walk into a new year. And with all our trust and confidence in almighty God. So we're going to be starting out, many of you might have heard that um, on this coming Sunday, the 8th, we're going to be having or starting our, our annual fast that we normally do for 21 days. And we extend to you a welcome to be a part of that. And uh, we know that God is going to do some wonderful, wonderful things. You know, something we shared Sunday was that we believe that God is going to give somebody an ooh-wee blessing in 23. And I believe that. And I receive that. Even for myself. An ooh-wee blessing in 2023. So God is good. And again, it's just good to be with you. Now, if you will allow me, of course, due to the fact that we are going through the fast, I would like to just share a little bit of insights and wisdom and things about fasting uh, these couple of weeks that we have as we go through this period of fasting and prayer. And I would like to share with you just some scriptures I think that would be really most re relevant and pertinent to what we're doing and what we'll be participating in. Now, if you have a pencil, you can jot down with me the following scriptures we would like to try to cover. First would be Genesis 2 and 7. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Next would be Daniel chapter 1, verses 12 through 15. That's Daniel chapter 1, verse 12 through 15. Then Matthew chapter 6, verse 16 through the 18th verse. Matthew chapter 6. Verse 16 through the 18th verse. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Psalms 34, verse 8. Psalms 34, verse 8. Matthew chapter 6, verse 28 through 33. Matthew chapter 6, verse 28 through 33. 1 John 2. Verse 16, 1 John chapter 2, verse 16, Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, and Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 17. That's Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 17. So to God be the glory and praise. Let us have a word of prayer before we begin. Father, again, we're grateful and thankful. Yes, Lord. Father, we can do nothing without you, and we seek your blessings upon this lesson, this Bible study. Speak through us, precious Holy Spirit. Give us your insight and your wisdom for your people. And we will be so careful as to give you all the glory, praise, and honor. And thank you in advance for the wisdom you're going to impart. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, when we talk about fasting, of course, that is a very unique thing to even consider. Some people don't even realize that that's a word. You know, that when we hear fast and when it relates to food, they think of fast food. You know, nothing about fasting but fast food. You know, our culture, our society is full with places where you can go eat fairly cheap and fairly quick. They can fix that food really quick for you. And the emphasis is always on fast food not fasting. A lot of times you sit down, you may watch TV, you notice that there's a lot of different commercials, but oh, don't, don't omit, omit the food commercials that you see. The pizza and, and all of the all the things they show 
uh, how people are sitting around enjoying eating and so forth. So, for, so food plays a very, very important part. Now, understand in this particular country, our country, uh, the, we realize that the emphasis is not on health. It is on wealth. They're interested, of course, in trying to gain or get as much profit as they can. And if they have to recook your food over and over in the grease, or whatever might happen in that kitchen, you know, we're, we have to realize that the aim or their goal is not to make sure that you are in the best health and they're serving you the best food, but to, in order to simply gain as much as they possibly can in profit. It's about money. That's what it's all about. And we realize that as we go through this year, even in 2023, we realize that the world is not rid itself of COVID. We realize that there are still challenges and people are still having to be cautious and so forth. And, and, and we know that COVID and this virus has gotten a lot of attention. But we have to also remember, though, though it's not the number one disease that causes problems in our country. The number one, the first, is heart disease. Heart disease is caused by, uh, you know, a lot of people eating the wrong things, greasy foods and so forth, fast food and different things like that. And the second problem or, or disease causing agent is cancer. So I know, like I said, there's a lot of focus about COVID and so forth, but we can't let uh, these other diseases just simply go under the radar and not take in consideration that they, too, play a very important part in our health. So, as we go forward, I want you to just have an open mind and realize that, you know, this is our body that God has given us, and here we are to, to make sure we do as much as we can to take care of it and maintain it. Look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. A very powerful, powerful powerful point that I want to make. We are indeed a wonderfully well put together creature. God formed us from the dust of the ground and breathed into our nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. So keep this in mind. The true essence of our nature, we are a spirit. We have a soul and we, which is our mind, our will, and our emotions, and we live inside a body. Again, you are, and you and I, we are a spirit. We have a soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions, and we live inside this body. This body is the home, the house. Think about that. Even the home for the precious Holy Spirit dwells within inside our temple. We are referred to as the temple of Almighty God. Now, anything that moves or operates requires maintenance. Anything that is alive or moving or operates requires maintenance. Think about a car. Make regular oil changes, tires, brakes, service, and so forth. Think about a lawnmower. You know, it can buy, no matter about buying a brand new, it still requires maintenance. And the same thing we have to consider when we think about our lives. And we think about our bodies. And so uh, maintenance is required to keep this temple or this body in, in this ultimate shape. So optimum uh, perf perfection and, and performance for this body is required. Maintenance that must be performed. So when you think about that, maintenance is part of the upkeep for our body. Regular preventive maintenance is so much better than than compulsory or mandatory maintenance or actions. A lot of times people don't do things and then they're, later on they're forced to have to do them if they want to continue to survive. So keep that in mind. Then when you think about maintaining this vessel, our body, you think about the fact that we take a, we spend a lot of time, and you notice what Pastor is saying, I say it in love, but there's a lot of time and money spent on the outward man. A lot of time and money spent on the physical flesh and the things of that. And we are concerned with 
with, 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 with at this time of the year, of, a lot of people are concerned with what they look like physically and so forth. And that's fine. It's good because when we pursue fasting, it also addresses the issues of not what we just look like on the outside, but it also addresses what we will, how we perform and what we can do to cleanse the inside. So there is a cleansing that needs to take place. Yes, think about it. Now, a lot of the ingredients in the processed foods that we eat, you can't pronounce them. They, they're required to put them on the box, but you know, but you may be sodium dehydrate or, you know, or sodium dioxide or sodium bicarbonate and all these things. Or sodium nitrate. I mean, all, there's so many ingredients, artificial colorings, uh, dyes and things that they are putting in the food that we must, we must take the opportunity to be sure that we give our body a chance to heal and, and a chance to, to cleanse itself of a lot of toxins that we intake as we just simply go through life living and eating. So you have to realize one of the ways that we can cleanse the inside and allow the body to heal is by fasting. Food should not be used as, as something, you know, just to consume. But, you know, the old saying is that you, you, you shouldn't just, what, you know, live to eat, but eat to live. You know, yeah, your, your whole essence should be not trying to just eat. But with the, you should be conscious of the things that you're putting into your body in order to keep you alive. And food plays a very important part. If you go at Daniel chapter 1 verse 12, you see something. Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, before they received their uh, Babylonian names, you know, they were all captured and brought into captivity. But Daniel did not want to defile himself with the food of the of, of of those those who had brought them into captivity. Daniel made a request to those who were over them because Daniel was a prize. Uh, they were top in the class. They were, they were, you know, basically valedictorian, and they were just someone special. And the king wanted them to, 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 to be elevated in their status. And and. And, but Daniel made a request to one of the, you know, the guard people, those that were watching over him. He says, Get us an, give us an opportunity not to eat the king's meat. If you look at it, Daniel's 1 and 12, he says, Prove thy servants, I beseech thee. All I'm requesting is 10 days. And let them give us pulse to eat. When you think of pulse, you think of uh, plants and vegetables and beans and legumes and things like that. And water to drink. Plants to eat and water to drink. Things that all I want is 10 days. Thank you for what you're trying to give us with the king's food or the king's menu. But Daniel said, let us, let Daniel, let, let us, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, let us eat something totally different for 10 days. And then check us out after 10 days. Verse 13. Then let our countenance be looked upon before thee. And the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. And as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So he consented to them in this manner and proved them ten days. So the, the, the one in charge of Daniel and the, the three Hebrew boys, he agreed to let them have their, their special fruit, vegetable diets, and water only. And at the end, look at verse 15, at the end of the 10 days, their countenance appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat of the portion of the king's meat. So those boys were not only just handsome, but now they were just radiant. Their skin tone, their countenance was totally different. And the only thing that they could attribute this to was the diet. Daniel, Daniel, and the three Hebrew boys was eating plants, fruits and vegetables and things of that nature and plenty of water. Plenty of water. So they were purifying themselves. 
they were cleansing themselves. Something so so simple that God realizes that we need to keep this in mind. We need to do this. It's part of our, it should be part of our walk with Christ as we go through this life with Christ. Look at Matthew chapter 6 verse 16. It says this, Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Matthew 6, 17. This is very important. I want to emphasize it, you know, this, these first five words. But thou, when thou fastest, think what, and now listen what Jesus is saying, but thou, it's written in big, bold, red letters, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face. So he's automatically letting us know, us know that it's not optional. Fasting for a child of God is not optional. Jesus said, when you fast, not if you fast, but he said, when you fast. And that is something very, very important. I want you to know it's not an optional thing that you do. It is something that God requires. And, you know, hopefully I'm praying that this year we can incorporate it more than just the initial beginning of the year. I'm praying that we can incorporate not as long, but, but short other fasts throughout the year that would just help us keep up that regimen of, of, of maintaining good health and keeping ourselves in optimum condition. Can you say amen? Amen. So, Jesus said, Thou, when thou fastest, not if you fast. So, fasting should be incorporated. It should be integrated as a part of our life, as a part of our walk of faith with Christ. Now, something we have to watch out for also and, and keep in mind, and that is this. As we do participate on this fast and go forward, we must realize that we don't want the enemy to get advantage of us because he's so subtle and so sneaky. And we don't want our focus to be on food. No, we, we, we're not fasting so that we can sit and think about all the stuff we can't eat. No, we've missed the point. We've missed the whole goal. Purpose of fasting is, is not only to help us physically improve our health, which it does, but it also gives us an opportunity to make sure that we, we kind of get away from the world. We kind of withdraw a little bit. And our attention and our focus is not on what we can eat, but our focus is on uh, our desire toward our Heavenly Father, spending time with God, spending time in His presence. So you have to keep this in mind. You know, Matthew 5, 6 says this. You know, we have to have a different type of hunger and thirst. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6 says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. So as we're fasting, sure there are going to be times we're going to be a little hungry. We're going to have those desires for that sugar, especially that sugar. Yes. But... Our focus should not be on what we can't eat, but how can I take this time? How can I spend time in, in the Word and with my Savior in prayer? I'm going to hunger and thirst after the things of righteousness. And Psalms 34 verse 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. So he, we're invited to taste and see that the Lord is good. See, the more we fast and as we fast, we have to realize that you will notice that your relationship with God will become closer. Yes, you will, be have, you will have a more intimate and close relationship with our Heavenly Father as we go into this fast and as we focus upon Him. Our attention, again, should be drawn away from what we cannot eat. But our attention should be on focusing on the things of God and, and how can we draw closer to him. And I pray, Father God, that you would meet the members of our church in such a special way. Lord, let this fast, let this breakthrough, Lord, be of one where you show yourself faithful and you show yourself strong. Lord, we pray for your blessings and your miracles, Lord, will just come forth. And you will manifest yourself in a special way 
Yes, we do in Jesus' name. Amen. So it's not an option, family. And we are we're not focusing, we're not gonna fall prey to the to to the to you know, you know, the, the little schemes of the devil. Have you focused the whole time? If you spend twenty one days thinking on what you can't eat, you've missed the whole point of the fast. So we want to develop an intimate, more closer relationship with God. And understand something. When we make God our focus, when we make God our priority, guess what he does? It's, it's, it's referred to as seeking the kingdom. And if you look at, look at Matthew chapter 6, you begin to realize, if we look at verse, beginning at verse 28, he tells you something. See, as we begin a new year, sometimes there will be apprehension and concern about um, a new year, you know, what, what, Lord, what's going to happen, what are we going to do, how are we going to pay this, how are we going to make this, how are we going to get out of this debt. There could be a lot of apprehensions at the beginning of a new year. But understand something, as we fast and draw closer to God, you begin to realize that uh, you don't have to be concerned with those things. What, Pastor? Yeah. Fasting can help us focus and become are very close and intimate with God to the point where uh, what we're going to eat and what we're going to wear, none of that stuff has to be our focus. And, it, and, 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 and Jesus picks up on that as we, we, we share in Matthew chapter 6, beginning at verse 28. And he said, So why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if, thou, if God so clothed the grass of the field which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father, North, that ye have need of all these things. So even before we go into 2023, as we just step into this year, this new year, you need to realize that God already knows what you have need of. He all, he's already aware of your situation. It's no surprise. Yes, I say again, God already knows the things that we need. It's no surprise to God. But as we pray, as we fast, as we study the word, we pray to God and we get closer and more intimate. There's something that happens automatically. Look what verse 33 says. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And the pastor said, I've been walking with Christ for over 40 plus years. And I can say of a surety, I can say with confidence, and I can be very bold and dogmatic about it. That verse is so true. When you place God in the priority, and you put God in first place, you seek to spend time with Him and be intimate with Him, guess what's going to happen? The things that you need, the material things, the clothing, the food, the shelter, all that stuff will be added automatically. Or it's going to be automatic. I've seen it, family. I'm not talking about what I've heard. And I'm still walking in it. God is good. God is good. So, so as we fast and pray, let your goal not be on focusing on what you can't and can't eat. No, that's secondary. That's secondary. Your focus will be on, Lord, how can I spend this time and this set-aside um, time of to, 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 to seek you and how can I do it more effectively? I want to spend more time with you. And then you begin to realize that all your other stuff is going to be added. It's going to be added. The things you need are simply going to be added. Hallelujah. What a deal. Amen. Amen. So when we fast, we, we're seeking, and I want to bring this point out, to keep the flesh in check. We're fasting to make sure that we can keep the flesh in check. Because that flesh is something else. Yes, it is. That flesh is absolutely something else. And we're seeking to the best of our ability to keep the flesh, the flesh in check. Now, understand something. From the very beginning, you know, what 
doubt us to be in the situation that we're currently in, even across the world, is because of the first family. What happened was them basically in the Garden of Eden. They disobeyed God and they fell. But you have to understand something. One of the reasons that we do fast is also to bring those selfish and, and, and lustful desires and cravings under control. Yes, this flesh, this body is something else. It sure is. And one of the reasons we fast and one of the reasons we should incorporate it more regularly is to keep this flesh in check. If you look at 1 John 2 and 16, it tells us something. 1 John chapter 2, verse 16 says, For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It's not of the Father, but of the world. So three things. Lust of the flesh, mm -hmm, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Those are the things that we need to keep in check. Even though we're saved, we love the Lord. When you don't fast, you can become a little bit spiritually what you refer to as weak. And temptation will come. The enemy it will always bring forth something to try to lure, to try to pull you away, to try to tempt you. Fasting is one way that you can utilize to try to break those strongholds and break those connections. Some of us, it's very important that we realize that, that we need to keep this flesh in check. So when you think about it, like I said, you've got lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. If you go with me to Genesis 3, 6, you'll see that, when, that even in the beginning, it was the same basic things that got everyone involved in trouble. Our first parents, Experience lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And it's all explained here in Genesis 3, 6. Now, of course, God told them not to touch the tree good and, of, of good and evil. And he wanted them to stay away from that knowledge. But, of course, the enemy came in and caused her to, to change her whole perspective about what God says. So you have to be careful, too, who you give your ear to. Because people can change you. People can, can, can change or try to alter God's word and get you off course. And the enemy came and he was very successful with Eve. Verse 6 of Genesis chapter 3. And when, when, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that's lust of the flesh. She see that this is good for my flesh. Mm-hmm. And, and that it was pleasant to the eyes. Automatically right there. Lust of the eyes. Yes. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. There you go. Now they want to elevate themselves and be wise. God had already given them wisdom to stay away from it. But they also saw this tree of desire to make one wise. There you go. You have the pride of life. So when she saw that the tree was good for food, that was lust of the flesh. That it was pleasant to the eyes, that's lust of the eyes. That the tree to desire to make one wise, that was the pride of life. And it's basically those three sins that are still running rampant upon this earth. But look at what your commercials and TV and look at how they do cars commercials. You know, they, you know, you just, you know, it, it's totally different. I mean, you know, everything's everything is just fast and cut this and you you. You, you, you show people uh, portraying that they're really enjoying this car and, and different scenes and different things. and all, all Everything's fast, you know. But it's the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life that is still getting people in trouble. And we will fast in order to keep those things in check. Yes, keep those things in check. So many people right now are hooked and addicted to certain things that they shouldn't be hooked and addicted to. So many people are living two lives because of their cell phones and, and things of that nature. You know, some people are, are just living a secret life because of lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. 
Yes. And we want to close and get you to understand the Galatians letting us know that you shouldn't have to live a life like that. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, but it's telling you, in essence, what's going on. What is Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 is, in essence, sharing with you what exactly is happening and what's going on. There is a conflict. Fasting will help us to, to, to get an edge over the flesh which is trying to defeat us. Yes, carnal. All right, Galatians 5, verse 16, verse 17. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That should be powerful. Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For you, a lot of people are walking in the flesh. The carnality is, is rampant. Yes, people are, are watching things they shouldn't watch. They're seeing things that they shouldn't see. They're participating in things. They, they're involved in things that they shouldn't be involved in. Not realizing, and not saying they're bad people. They're good people. There could be good people who are involved in things that, that, that they realize that they shouldn't be a part of. The enemy is using against them. But you got to realize, too, through fasting and prayer and trusting God, he can break those strongholds so that you don't have to live a double life. You don't have to be a secret agent. You don't have to be a spy. You can just be normal and be you. Do you. Can you say amen? Yes. So look what it says. Now, when you don't take, get control of this flesh and when you don't bring it under control, which we will, we will be working on with this fast. It says, verse 17, For the flesh lusts against the spirit. Okay. And the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. And here's the kicker. So that you cannot do the things that you would. Many of us, we want to live a certain way. Many of us want to have a certain character and 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 and, and we want to walk before God and be pleasing in His sight. Many of us, we're struggling with things. You struggle with issues. You're struggling with, with websites and, and, and things and, and you, they're on your phone that you shouldn't be a part of. You're struggling with it. We're praying that through the power of God and the precious Holy Spirit and through this fast that it will give you your spirit man chance to become stronger than the flesh and help you to break those addictive habits of, of things that you are embarrassed to be a part of. I know and I believe, I have confidence that, that this will be a beginning. This will be a start. Yes, so that you won't be like this. The, the spirit and flesh are contrary to one another and so you cannot do the things that you would. One of the things, and you've heard Pastor use this example, I think is always appropriate, is that if you've got two dogs of equal strength and, and of the same breed, whatever, and they're getting a fight, the question is, if they're equal in weight, breed, and everything, who will win? And the answer is always the same, the one you feed the most. Hallelujah. So if your flesh is winning, if you're watching things and being a part of things that you're embarrassed, if you're living a secret life, then you realize that your flesh is winning. So the one that you're feeding now is the flesh. And, you know, the carnal man, that carnal nature, nature will not allow you to, to do and accomplish the things that God has for you. So as we focus on the spirit man, give him an opportunity to, 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 to become stronger you will find yourself being able to overcome and, and not be a part of things that you are ashamed of and things that you have to, that, that, that are making you live a secret life. Now, I don't know who I'm talking to, but God knows who he's talking to. So keep that in mind. As we go with this fast, as we seek God and his word, we're going to be praying that God will give us to our spiritual man strength to overcome the flesh. And the only difference is we'll be spending more time feeding the spirit man than we do the flesh. And then that will give him an edge. Can you say amen? Yes. So we're going to be expecting breakthroughs. We're going to be expecting uh, 
miracles. We're going to be expecting deliverance. And we just trust God that he's going to do some wonderful things as we go forward. So if you pray with us, we'd like to spend uh, another uh, couple of weeks possibly with, with, with Lord's tarriage. And that we're going to share some more things about the purpose of fasting. But right now, we realize that it's going to help to keep our flesh in check so that we can do the things that we know that God wants us to do. And we don't have to live a secret life. We don't have to hide and, and be ashamed of things. No, our spiritual man will become stronger and will overcome the flesh because they're constantly in conflict. So we claim victory for you. Amen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, let us pray. Father, we love you and we thank you again for allowing us to come into another year of 2023. And Father, we can't do this without you. As we begin this fast and we go forward, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would give us breakthroughs. Give us, Father God, uh, your wisdom. Give us your strength, Father. Help us to overcome everything that the enemy is using against us. And we are grateful. So we're believing you for supernatural blessings and favor and wisdom and strength. And we receive it in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. God be the glory. God be the praise and the honor is our heart's desire. We love you. And let me say this. Thank you again for being with Pastor. Thank you so much. I just pray that God will reward you in such a special way when he, we all get the glory. And your crowd will be as large as it can be. So we love you. We appreciate you. And we say God bless.